I'm Zach. And I'm Dwight. And this, this is, is the, the Rusty Bucket, Bucket and Nails, Nails Podcast. Podcast. I know y'all can't see this, but we just stabbed. Yeah, I know. It's the greatest thing ever. All right, so so Dwight, what's been going on with you? Uh, what's been going on? Uh, my college life has been me watching paint dry, waiting for my exams at 5 o'clock in the afternoon, and uh, being a commuter. And that's really been it. I've been sitting there just kind of doing really nothing at college. How about you, Zach? Well, you've been, so you drive like 15 minutes to college every day, don't you? Yeah, pretty much. Pretty 15 minutes. It's really only 15 minutes? It's like a 30 minute drive. It's like he drives 30 minutes to school every day. Yeah. I don't walk that far, dude. All right. <laughs> Dwight goes to UC, I go to OU. Yeah. UC, uh, man, the Bearcats. We're from OU, the Bobcats. Oh. We're not that different. No, not, yeah, I know. Right, they're so, just they're cats. They're both just cats. And I'm from, and my high school was the Tigers. My, cat, my high school is the Bulldogs. Okay, that's the outlier. Yeah, that's the outlier. Well, we're all mammals. Okay. <laughs> all right, so I got a job recently. Uh, where do you work? Your mom. Uh, so uh, <laughs> so basically, like, I got a job at my... Uh, Such an old-ass job. At uh, Nelson. It's the cafeteria there. Uh, what? Okay, so you got like a UC... You, no, you got like a college job. Yeah, I got a job. I technically do work for the university, yes. Yeah. I get... I, there are three... Uh, Mass Hall's University. There's Boyd. There's Boyd. Is it like a void? A Boyd, not void. Void. You go B-O-Y-D. there. O Y D. You go I've, there to disappear. I've never. only been there once because it's so far out of the way from where I live. It's a void. It's the void. It's the void. It's it, void. The void. Yeah, yes. you go out there and it's you like, uh, fall off the t- face of existence. It's a 15 fucking minute walk from my dorm to get to Boyd. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. You you find this ledge. And below it is this vast darkness, and there's a little sign that says Boyd. Yeah. And abandon all hope, ye who enter here. Yeah. They got good lasagna, though. I mean, it's the Void. Yeah. Come to the dark side, we got lasagna. And so, uh, yeah, then there's the other one, Shively. That's where you eat with your... That's where, if you're going to go eat with your friends, that's where you eat. Is Shia LaBeouf there? No. No? No, no. Really? Uh, there, uh, that's it's, it's, it's centrally located. That's, that's the... I've, so it's the big one in the middle. It's the small one in the middle. You think that you think that most people would go there, but for some reason it's closed on Fridays and Saturdays. And thinking about closing <laughs> it on Sundays too because they just don't get that much business. I'm like, how do they not get that much business? You're centrally located. They must have shit food. This food there is good. <laughs> don't know what's going on there. They don't have the right chicken nuggets. All right. Well, no, well, but then there's Nelson. It's about a five minute. Shadley's literally right across the street from where I live. But uh, uh, I, li- I work at Nelson. It's about a five-minute walk away. Nelson's apparently the big one, right? Nelson, I would, it's about as big as Boyd. It's, uh, so that's, that's where I got a job because that's where, that's where I used to eat all the time. I eat at Shifley. Wait, you know. I just figured out why Shifley might not do so well. Why? Because uh, Shia LaBeouf runs it. Oh, yeah. yeah. He will not divide us. He will, they, won't, they won't divide us the between flags, the three the, fucking... The flags, are, the flags are everywhere. And you're constantly seeing people, like, climbing the building, taking the flags yeah. out. <laughs> yeah, well, I work at Nelson. And uh, first day, they have me wash dishes. Okay. Pretty And, uh, you know, I washed dishes gr- growing up. <laughs> no! Like, well, actually, my parents didn't start making me wash my dishes until I was, like, 12 or 13. But... I yeah, t- I wash dishes occasionally when the parents aren't home. Yeah, well, I washed... I, I used to always wash my dishes, and so now I'm... Doing that for a living. Back in high school, I refused to get a restaurant job because I'd have to wash dishes, and now I'm washing dishes. Well, that well, back in high school, you would get a restaurant job at a fast food place, and then you would have that one jackass worker who's just sitting around smoking pot. <laughs> they, they laughed like that too. The e he he motherfuckers. Were, I had two. I had a couple friends work at this place that was once a Gold Star Chili that became a place called the Dog Shack. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the hell the deal was, but like they, all, I always heard, heard. Oh, yo, man, you won't, you won't go to the dog shack. Yeah, the dog shack. I, I, like they changed it from Gold Star Chili to Dog Shack, and then um, I always heard stories about this one kid who went to the high school as well, who worked there, and all he would do was just sit outside, and smoke. No, I'm on the clock, dude. He <laughs> He'd just sit there, be stoned as shit on his job, and like everybody else would have to pick up the slack on him. And everything, and then he would just go to school, and he would just like vape under the <laughs> like he would bring his he would have like a vape pen, and he would vape under the desk and everything. That's it. Yeah. 
When it, so okay, so at, washing dishes isn't, isn't all I do, but that's what they had me do on my first day. And uh, they basically they had a whole line of people washing dishes because they have a lot of dishes. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically, they gave me the one spot without a faucet, so I was just using leftover water from the other faucets <laughs> to wash to wash the dishes I got. And uh, gotta gotta re gotta and, recycle that water. You know what? Have you ever washed dishes on an industrial scale before? Um, I've washed dishes after dinners for. No, I'm talking at an industrial scale. Like no. it's coming to you at a con on a conveyor belt. No. It, it, it makes you question the uh, deliciousness of food. Because there's so much shit left over. Yes, it make it, you look at this food. And whether whether or not you'd actually eat the original meal yourself, you're thinking, "Why do you? Wh how do people eat this? I, I, I got this. I got this plate that was just some green liquid. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? I don't know what it was, but it was just some green liquid. It was a, with like little chunks of green shit in it. It was a melted ver a virgin. Oh no. Vegan ice cream. I don't know what it, but it was, it was just like, it was like a, a plate full of it. I'm like, it's like they what is this? <laughs> Zach, stay away. It might consume you. It's, it's a it's blob. Just, it's, uh, there was this other thing. I just got a plate full of ketchup. <laughs> like, like not on this, not a little bit on Are the side. Are you sure it's ketchup? The entire plate was ketchup. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, a funny idea. Let's just cover this plate and get up. It was a big plate too. It was like twelve inch diameter, and like and like and you know the, you know how you get ketchup in Nelson. You don't have the little packages. You don't have the squirt bottles. You have to go up to a little pump and push it out. <laughs> so he did that like thirty. I'm assuming it's a guy because you know damn well no girls did that. It was like some dumbass jockism and just like you know it was one of those e he he motherfuckers who did that, and, yeah. and so you they pressed the squirt button probably like thirty <laughs> fucking times. It's, it's just like he is funny. Imagine being the dude who's trying to use the ketchup thing after that, and it's like you don't even have any ketchup left. Yeah, that's <gasps> that's me though. That's what I go to know. So there's no ketchup left. So that's because that's what the fuckers always filling up with ketchup. <laughs> 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 ketchup. I don't know what. Just like, just like, I gotta clean, bitch, I gotta clean that up. <laughs> God, I just got the hiccups. And then, and then, so then, but the thing about washing dishes is the dish room, there's water everywhere. Yeah. They, they just tell you, like, it's a real tripping hazard. You can't walk. <laughs> you gotta slide if you're gonna go somewhere there. Your feet cannot leave the ground or else there's about a 50-50 chance you will fall on your ass. They have you working there for nine fifteen an hour. That's not bad. That's not bad. They'd increased it recently because the Ohio minimum wage went up to eight fifteen, and now I'm getting paid nine fifteen. Okay. And so that one means living wages are gonna, living expenses are gonna go up or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I wouldn't be that much. It's not. It's not like a dramatic increase. Yeah. It's. It's not like they're. Uh, it's not like it's fifteen bucks an hour. <laughs> Ninety bucks an hour is the minimum wage. Thirty-five dollars and fifteen bucks minimum Poverty wage. Poverty goes to zero. Tra translation: I live in New York. Yeah, maybe it wouldn't make sense in New York actually, where the cost of living is high. But like, no, not nationally. But so, but I get paid nine thirty-five for a specific job. Yeah. Because on Tuesdays I do kitchen kitchen setup and kitchen cleanup. Kitchen okay. setup I get paid nine fifteen for, but I got to clock out and clock back in to get paid nine thirty-five for kitchen cleanup. Okay. And kitchen cleanup, they gave me this massive tub of egg batter. Like it was so okay. massive, we had to it had we had to put it on wheels. We had to roll it around. What were you just dumping shit in it? I, I I had to take a massive pot, fill that with the egg batter, and then put that in containers, and then put saran wrap over the containers and put that in a freezer. So it was well, like then. we're saving this massive box of air, this massive tub of. Air. Egg batter for later. It's like you find like a chick just like popping out of it. Fuck. <laughs> it's it makes that noise. But yeah, that's my that's my job. I also have to sweep. You know, also sometimes I have to. Uh, I still need to get a fucking job. And this is your pa are your parents gonna let you have a job? Yeah, they find your mom's loosening the chain. Yeah, my I, I they've been telling me to get. A, they've been talking about me trying to get a job and I'm trying to get a job on campus uh, so I could get it. No, it wasn't that hard for me to get a job on at Nelson, but although it did take me four months to do it because I signed up 
and then and then like they they have a sign up sheet that says need a job sign up here but then they never reach you out about it Oof. you have to send them an email that's dumb and and be and be like hey why don't you reach out to me it's like okay here you would show up on this day <laughs> fuck now i have it yeah and then uh there's a job career fair next week in my at my university and yeah I'm you should go to that yeah i'm gonna go to that. Get, a, get a job yeah lazy bum Hey, you know, I at least I've been like doing my classes and shit. So it's not like I've fallen off the fucking face of the earth. <laughs> yeah, you say you say you don't do anything in your classes though. Yeah, I do actually a yeah. lot. Well, I, it's yeah, a I lot of reading that. and like math assignments, and I've been struggling in calculus and. Oh yeah, calculus is hard. Calculus is a bitch. It makes you really like just sit there and think. Oh, we're gonna go over this concept. Oh, it looks really easy. Oh, wait a minute. I feel like a complete retard. I don't even know what I'm doing. Like, it, I swear, it, like, makes you, like, rethink, like, how intelligent you are. Because everybody else around you seems to get this. And then you're just like, I feel completely brain dead. I don't even know what I'm doing. And I think I'm doing it correctly because this is how I used to do it back in algebra. But I not anymore. Yeah, this, this guy took algebra 2 his senior year. It's basically pre-calc at our university. We don't actually have a pre-calc. Applied calculus. Is oh, so this is an actual calculus class. Yes. Well, for me, actually, pre-calc was harder than calculus. The pre-calc I took my junior year was harder than calculus. Because uh-huh. calculus is like, it's like the derivative of a squared is two a. Like, like the hard part is the stuff you learn in pre-calculus. Oh, okay. In my in my opinion, at least. Well, I just got to take applied calculus because that's all I really need to get into bin, uh, Lindner for marketing. Yeah. I, I got a funny story to tell you. What? So, like, basically, I, I registered for a political science class at the beginning of the semester, right? Yeah. And uh, I take, I go out and take the class. Uh, it starts on, it's on, it's on Tuesday from 11 to 12. So mm-hmm. I wake up at, like, it was my first class of the day, so I wake up at, like, 10, 20. I, 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 get, I get dressed, go, do everything, head up to class around 10, 50, hold my schedule in my hands, and says it's in Sharon. I'm like, I'm, and, I, and I look at my phone, where's Sharon Hall? Because I've never heard of that before. <laughs> I realize, it's in another fucking university. It's a... Oh my god, you actually... That- it's a two-hour drive away in St. Clairsville on the eastern campus. I, I saw that it says east campus, not that meant like the eastern part of campus. No, that's a different campus. You know, It's Christmas- a 34-hour walk away. On Christmas break... I had discovered that one of my classes was at Blue Ash and not the main campus. Yeah, and then you, I managed to How could you make that decision when you put all that effort into into taking a picture off your computer screen and then printing out the picture of your computer screen <laughs> instead of just printing it off your computer? <laughs> I he was, did that. He did that. I already had like a phone picture of it and I was just like, you know what, I'm just gonna take this and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna use it. I think what happened with me is that is that they didn't list the location when I first registered with the class. It just said question marks. Oh, that's and, stupid. And so then they gave it a location two hours away. I'm that's like, I don't, I don't have fuck. a car. At least on campus, I don't have a car. I can't go there. <laughs> Get fucked. I can't just fucking go there. Yeah. And so I dropped that class. I went and dropped that class, registered for a marketing class instead. Showed up to that class. And then that class started at noon, so I showed up to that class a couple minutes later. And the professor went around, asked each of us for a fun fact. My fun fact was I had registered for that class 45 minutes ago. You know what? Um, It's funny. On our campus, there's these two different areas that are on two different sides of the campus called Linder. And it's so dumb. There's Linder Hall, and then there's Linder Linder Center. Like, I think it's the dumbest thing ever. Linder Hall is on the other side of the football stadium. And Linder Center is all the way over here by my parking garage. And I'm like, what the hell... Why? <laughs> Why did you name these two places Lindner? Seriously? Seriously? And they're both for business. So it's like, oh, well, some of your classes might be in Lindner Hall, and some of them might be in Lindner Center. On it's the like, other side of campus. Yeah, it's like, and it's like they're both Lindner. And it's like, dude, you go in the Lindner Hall, and it's like all af- like sports and athletic shit on the bottom layer. For the e he he motherfuckers. Yeah, and it's like, dude, you have to go on the top levels in order to actually get to the business shit. I'm like so confused. Like, what the hell is with this building? It feels so weird. Like, you got the lower level being all, like, dedicated to sports and shit, and then it's like, oh, it's business for the rest. It's like, what the hell? What the hell is this place? <laughs> I thought this would be, like, a sports athletic area. And <laughs> Did you like, make that no. mistake? Did you go to the wrong one? Yeah, I went to the wrong one. <laughs> I wouldn't expect that situation to exist without you going to the wrong one, because... 
<laughs> it's just so dumb. It's so like, I like I passed this building like almost most of the time in my first semester, and I didn't really realize it was a business building because it's like the bottom wall, like layer, the layer that you enter is lined to the brim with like sports stuff. You're talking about swimming, boxing, football, tennis, all these things, yada yada yada, and it's like. Bro, how in the hell am I supposed to know that if I go up that elevator, this is going to be a business center? <laughs> <laughs> it's like so, it's like playing a Super Mario level. <laughs> Dude, I, if I go through this area right here, I can unlock a trap door that can take me to level A. Yeah, you, do, you own the cannon, man. Yeah. Warp zone. But uh, so, something like that sort of happened to me because I thought I had a class in what's called Porter Hall. But I thought that building was a, was a dorm. So I walked around that building for a couple minutes. Where's where's Porter Hall? Where where is it? While right behind me, there there's the sign that says Porter Hall. I'm like, that's not Porter Hall. That someone lives there. No one lives there. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. I love how campuses sometimes are just like randomly t- like tossed around everywhere. Yeah. Like everything is just like so like randomly just like splashed around. Yeah. It's like the, there's like an IT department right across from Subway, and the Subway's outside of the building that has like Burger King and all this other things in it. And it's like, you have like this little stairway that takes you to the exploratory classes area that's like right above like the cafeteria zone, that's like right next to the football stadium, and you're just like, wait, what? What? And yeah. it's like right over there is like all the sports equipment, all the training, and then there's the swimming pool. And there's this little staircase that you have to take to get into, like, the exploratory, like, seminar area. I'm, like, completely confused. Like, why is that a thing? And it looks so ugly because you just have this random, like, wonky-ass little staircase in the middle of, like, Main Street. That just takes you up to this building that's just, like... That's what happens when you build... That's what happens when you have to build things that tightly in the middle of a city. Yeah, I know. I'm going to UC tomorrow, so wish me luck. Okay, what are you doing at UC? What? What are you doing at UC? I'm going to visit some friends. Oh, okay. Like half my high school went there, so. Yeah. But the, but all the hot girls from my high school went to OU while I'm gone. Dude, calm down. I'm not. I'm not gonna fucking calm down. I wanted. I wanted to see them again, and then Zach would be like, "Boobs." <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm. A, I'm respect women. Okay. Bo- your boob alarm. I respect dead. women. <laughs> Rip. Uh, and so ba- I'm taking an African media class. It, basically, it's about how African Americans are depicted in the media. Very interesting class. You know, you, you learn about some stuff you didn't know. It's like, wow, that, that's why people were racist back then. You know, it makes sense, sort of. It doesn't racism doesn't make sense, but it makes sense why they were racist. <laughs> it makes sense. <laughs> oh, that makes sense. I think I'm going to be racist now. <laughs> <laughs> well, but but there's there's this one. There's, I remember on the first first fucking the. the I mean, OU is a majority white campus, and so you're not gonna you're not gonna go into that class, and it's gonna be all bl- all black people. It's like the class is a third black, though. Yeah, and so uh, but like besides like the universities that were originally black universities, I don't really like that kind of is a tr- that's like a normy thing in Africa. They, like, they have like the major like the, the, there's like a bunch of white. Yeah, people. that that normy you made it sound like I'm like it was a bad thing, but like no, but like yeah, this is normal. It, it, I guess it is sort of. I wouldn't say normal, but average. Yeah. I want to. I, I want to just call it black class, but but we're, we're this is a, we're sensitive people. This is a sensitive podcast, and we're not going to do something so insensitive. But uh, it's my African media class, and so uh, so this is the first fucking day. First fucking day, whitest bitch on the planet. <laughs> Ugh. She's there. She sits in the front, and then she, she she's trying. She, she has good intentions, all right. She's not trying to do any. She's not trying to be insulting. Did she just say something like completely racist? Or? Not completely racist, but it was still kind of racist. What was she, it? She she raised her hand and started talking about how how this how this is all new for her because she and this exact quote because there are only two colored people at my school. I'm thinking, well, I could tell because you just used the term colored people. Oh my god. <laughs> so, so, oh my. The professor was real cool about it too. He was just like, no, no, no. It's like persons of color. Okay. You, know, you do learn some interesting stuff. But uh, other, other than that, uh, oh yeah, so Dwight, I thought you were sheltered. What? Oh, but, what? but some of my friends did something real sheltered. I told, the, I told them that I drove through the business district of downtown Dayton during the day. They, and they weren't even joking. They were dead. I was like, dude, you're lucky. Dude, how'd you survive? 
Like the, the reaction is, is dead ass. Are like, you fucking kidding me? Like, like I told I told them I've been in downtown Dayton. And I'm like, dude, that's dangerous. I'm like, well, I, I was in the business district. Dayton, Dayton. Dayton, to be fair, Dayton does have a pretty high crime rate, but I'm like, I was in the business district, I'm like, D- dude, still. I'm like, I was driving in my car, and I'm like, D- D- dude, still, you could get robbed. And I'm like, it was the middle of the day, and they're like, dude, still. And oh my it's just like, God. Th- that, their exact words were something like, uh, something like, you're gonna get raped. Th- their exact words were something like, uh, Something like, dude, you're lucky you're still alive. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going, yeah, it's like you're surrounded by all these white collar people, it's and like. like I'm having an argument with them because not only have I driven through Dayton in the day, I've ridden my bike through it in the night. <laughs> Four times, as a matter of fact, in the last year. Like, and like I, w- I was in the. There are bad parts of Dayton. Yeah, it's, it does have a pretty high crime rate. I've looked at it into this, but yeah. I was definitely in a nice part. I was in a. It was a the park. Business it was a, it the was business sector. It was business sector is always a good part. Like, yeah. in Chicago, the business section is always a even good even in part. Detroit. Yeah, exactly. I still want to go there, but yeah. <laughs> but like I, I, where I was, it was a nice park. Some kids were playing in a fountain. Uh, was, uh, they had a very nice, very well made. Be careful, Zach. They're gonna turn around and shoot you up, man. <laughs> Yeah. Those kids are just gonna pull Glocks and they're just gonna start wailing. Very, very well maintained, maintained bike trail. Uh, very oh, nice. Be view. careful, Zach. That bike trail might have <laughs> AIDS <laughs> on it. That bike trail might have a heroin needle. Yeah, that bike trail might have AIDS on the sidewalk. It's a very, very nice view of the Great Miami River. Be careful, Zach. The river <laughs> the might come, come out. The and river drown. might shoot me. Yeah, the river might drown you. Yeah, just like, it will just rise up and suck the bridge <laughs> the rivers away. Rivers rise up. Yeah, and you know, very nice art. Art, what, art, well, might kill that art, what, you the art, the art might distract you while driving, and you'll have to crash. <laughs> yeah, just, I'm just like I've been, I've been there multiple times. My dude's just trying, and I'm like, well, I was in a probably not nice part of Dayton. The guy's like, dude, there are no nice parts of Dayton. Be careful, the nice parts of Dayton and, are gonna and kill I later, you. I later pull up a picture of where I was at, and he's like, well, doesn't this look nice? He's like, I don't know what you're talking about. I've never been to Dayton. <laughs> You, someone who's never been to downtown Dayton, is trying to tell, trying to lecture me, some guy who's been there four times in the last year. It's like, like, no, dude, I've, it's dangerous. I've driven through Dayton, tuned back from Lake Erie and stuff, and I don't. Really have know have you driven past Dayton on I seventy five, or have yeah, you actually been on, downtown? I was, on the, I was on the big. Highway. Have you ever, ever actually been downtown? No, no, that, that's what we're talking about here. We're talking like about I see, like downtown. I see, like a couple like really broken down and crummy looking factory like buildings, and then I see the river looking dry as shit. Like, as if the river really needs some water in it. Yeah, it does sometimes, but... It's really, it's really weird. It's like you're sitting there like, dude, what the fuck? The river doesn't even look like it exists. The ri- the river was real nice while I was there, at least. Yeah, I remember... Uh, and, then, you know, just some of these suburban white kids, they, they, go, they go to... They go to any place and like, you know, okay, for example, I, I went to... I went to on a, on a mission trip to Chicago once. Right? I was, I was, be careful, Zach. The sidewalks might rise up and kill you. Chicago, everyone in Chicago might shoot you. Yes, yes. The windows are going to drop down and kill you. Uh, the nuns are going to kill you. If, the uh, sun will bolt. fall from the sky. The sun will turn into a black hole. Yeah. The oceans will just swallow you up and carry you into Lake whatever. Michigan. In, Michigan, and you'll okay. die. Okay, so, so what happened was that I did is that I'm in the, I'm there with my predominantly suburban white church. And, um, I'm I'm there. You know, they they we're at a very well established mission trip organization that's organizing this all. They're obviously going to put us in a safe part of Chicago to stay. <laughs> they're obviously they're gonna all take freaking us out. They're like, we're gonna die. We're no, gonna- no, but they 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 weren't that bad. But they were they were extra careful. They were just because we were in that area where we were staying at. We were still in a predominantly safe area. I flash a basic gang sign. Okay, it's not even, it's this. Oh I do this. God. It's not even the gang sign of anything. So you guys can't see it, but I'm basically like holding up my, t- holding up the peace sign with my thumb sticking out and pointing it towards it like a 45 degree angle towards the ground. I'm, I do that. And they're like, dude, dude, you might get shot. I'm mm-hmm. like, bitch, bitch, who, who's, is someone going to see me doing this? And be like, I'm like, be like, man, that's a blood, man. <laughs> and, they, and think I'm part of a rival gang or some shit. It's like you're just like smashing your hands together, creating some like random symbol. It's, and it's like, like... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, there's possibly even an element of, of like of, of subtle racism to it because these these guys see more than two black. As soon as they see more than two black people hanging out with each other, and the they're like, oh, 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 this is the bad part. Ooh, we gotta be careful. <laughs> don't, don't be don't put, put your hands in your pockets so they don't see you making a gang sign. 
<laughs> oh my God. Some of these white kids, they did, they did it in New York, too. My New York mission New trip. York? New York. Really? Yeah. Dude, literally, I don't think that many people are, like, in the, of that type would exist in New York. New like, York's a pretty nice place. I've yeah, because, there. like, the money and, like, it's, the price to live there would force those kinds of people out. It's a top-tier city, like, globally. Like, only, like, it's New York, London, Paris, Moscow, Beijing, and Tokyo are, like, the top six yeah, like, tier if you cities live in, New York, in the world. If you live in New York, you're rich as shit, like... Well, certain parts. Yeah. If if well, I'm, we're talking about if we're talking about Manhattan, then yes. Yeah. Like a lot of that kind of crap would probably be like pushed out just because of the rates. Probably of the like housing. probably in like uh, the Bronx. You yeah. know, maybe Britain, Brooklyn, Queens is where Donald Trump is from, so it can't be that poor. Yeah. Uh, Staten Island is probably the richest commute part of not the. Well, no, Manhattan's the richest part because that's where the fucking stock exchange. That's where that's where trillion dollars are traded daily. But yeah. Wait, isn't Staten Island where, like, Great Gatsby took place? No, Great Gatsby took place in, like, the suburbs to the east of New York. Uh, that's, like, okay. West Egg, East Egg. Eggs. They're not real places, but... But, yeah, that's just that's that's just suburban white kids. I'm surprised a lot of them went to UC, because basically, like, certain parts of UC border right towards right towards the bad parts Clifton, of Cincinnati. Yeah, Clifton, yeah, Clifton. I drive right through there. Clifton all the time. I, right there through the bad part of Cincinnati. The one... Thing that has ever happened on campus, I think, was that there was a bunch of random people who actually were not from the campus. Oh, they were outside no. of the uh, lunch area, I think. I think I and they, heard about they, like they got into a fight, and one of them pulled out a gun, and I think he started firing or something. I think I heard about that. Actually. That's like the worst I've ever heard. Uh, and that war- was eleven o'clock at night, and I was already home. And that was the night I usually was the latest because of my Magic Gathering club. Scott, and Scott, I didn't wake up until uh, I didn't wake up like I didn't know about you this. You were thing. asleep on campus. No, I was I was asleep in my home. I was in my bed, and I didn't know about this until well into the morning. All right, so I guess I guess jo- a special guest star Josiah is here. Yeah, yeah. what's going on? What's All going right. on? All right, so we've been talking for a while now. Let's 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 transition. Let's transition to the main topic for today: high school versus college. Hmm. I had a lot of good high school memories. Uh, Josiah is still in high school, so yeah, he, he'll so provide us a unique he's perspective. A, he's, a, he's a senior. He's the top dog in high school. He needs to beat the shit out of all the freshmen. He has a girlfriend. Yeah. He gets to look at all the freshmen. He's like, you're dead. And the freshmen all skittle away in fear. Yeah, so... What so kinds of questions? Okay, so we're just, like, we're just talking about comparing them. Like, I, think, I think one of the biggest comparisons... One of the biggest differences between high school and colleges is that, like... The difference between a freshman and a senior in co- in high school is way bigger than the difference oh, yeah. between a freshman and senior in college. Yeah, I completely agree with that. Because Everyone like, right now, all the seniors, most of the seniors, that's uh, because you're still having are that polling, recover- are polling freshman thoughts. Oh, oh, oh! Yeah. I thought I, was I like, meant polling is in like they went out and asked them like no, no, no. assess the they, they, they just like, Donald Trump. No, no, they're just like grabbing them by the senior, feet. I know a senior point. whose friends consist of all freshmen. And she's kind of a thought, but most, <laughs> she's mostly interested in freshman guys. Uh. Oh, oh, well, cuckoo, cuckoo, Mrs. Robinson. Yeah, talk about oh. a cuckoo. Well, that that's not as bad if you're in college, though. Okay, like college, college seniors are still above freshmen significant, significantly, okay, but, but it's not nearly as stark. The contrast. everybody's in college. Like, in college, there's no longer that limit of oh shit, am I talking to a uh, child predator now, or is, yeah. you know, you're everyone's of legal age. There are a couple of se- people who are seventeen, but mostly eighteen. Yeah, because it's completely it's a completely different group of people where they've matured past high school. While in high school, some kids are 14, while some kids are 18. Kids that got held back could be 19 seniors. Yeah, so, so there like, are a few 17 So if year there old. are 19 year olds talking to a 14 year old, that is actually like. There is a high bad. schooler in one of my classes, and he's like 17. Nerd. Yeah. Uh, that, that does happen sometimes. Like, the, the deal is that, like, in uh, high school, everybody who's a freshman, they're still recovering from middle school. Middle school wasn't that bad for me. Uh, middle school. Well, mo- middle school is bad for everyone except me. Yeah, middle school is pretty pretty bad, and so high school. When you're a senior, you're just recovering from senioritis, and that's the, the big thing. In freshman year, you're trying to re re struggle against that senioritis shit. Because uh, is it is it me? Has senioritis come back to you? Uh, no, not really. I do, although I have been recently a bit nostalgic for my senior year because like. You know, like okay. So if I'm to rate every single grade from like from like 
kindergarten through senior year. If I were to rate that from best to worst, senior year would be right in the middle. Actually, it would be seventh. Uh, for me, it would go. It would be tenth grade was the best. Then seventh, fifth, eighth, ninth, something else. I think maybe se- I think second, and then seventh, and then twelfth. I would I would have to say, and freshman year sucked. I'm just gonna rate my high school years. Freshman year sucked. Um, sophomore year was probably my second best because I had a lot of friends back then. Junior year was just stupid because of the workload. And then senior year was actually pretty good because I had some really fun classes like Mr. Uh, oh my God, I've literally forgotten his name. <laughs> I, bros? Bros. 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 Yeah, me and Josiah, we well formed Bros' class. It was it was good times. Well, the reason the reason I'd say senior year's in the middle for me is because the first semester senior year was fucking awful. But then second semester was was amazing. It's weird. I'm sorry I'm I'm at a point now where I'm sort of feeling nostalgia for the second semester of my senior year. I think I think like but I gotta think I thinking back to like like the last two months of senior year, like March through May mm-hmm. twenty eighteen. It's so weird. And, uh, like, and it's just, I, I remember how, t- how slowly time went by. It was yeah. like... Yeah. And like, it, it seemed like 2018 lasted forever. I think the reason, part of the reason for that is because is that the last two months of senior year felt like, felt, felt like they were really fucking long. That's and like, because, usually like, that happens the last two weeks, but senior year was the last two fucking months. It felt that's like... That's because everybody and their grandma is like throwing assignments on you. And, everybody and their grandma. Yeah. And it's like, you're just like having like take that last load of high school work before you're fucking done yeah and it's 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 just like i don't i don't know what's going it's just the last two months went by real slowly you know you had you had a lot of stuff going you had a lot of stuff going on that for those last two months and all led up to graduation and then again, and then after that you had for me the first three months of senior year of college you know felt what? like what was the most satisfying feeling? Felt in the like world? two years or something. Not two years, but I felt like twice as long. The felt most, like I was gone for six months when I was gone for three. The most satisfying feeling in the world was uh, when my friend dropped me off in my place on that last day of high school, and that was true satisfaction right there. Yeah, I saw that. Everyone was like cheering for you. Think, think, <laughs> because yeah, I in was the in parade, the parade, right? Yeah, I was in the parade. Thing is, I really had. It's really hard to say what my last day of high school was. Technically, it was May twenty second, but I had an assignment due noon on May twenty third, and so I literally came into school at a regular time the next day. The seniors got out earlier than the rest of the, of the grades, and uh, finished that assignment and then left. Zach, how did that get resolved? What do you mean? Was it an actual assignment due? It was an actual assignment due due the due noon on the day after the end of senior year. That did you get a grade for it? Yeah, and then uh, I did get a grade for it. I got ninety percent actually, but it was the hardest essay I had to type. It was the hardest essay I ever had to type. So everybody that didn't go to school that day got zeros. Uh, no, you didn't have to. You could turn it in online, but I prefer to just go into school because I felt like I'd be motivated, more motivated there. Dude, and then your son. and then I, you know I'd like and the seniors got out the last day early too, so I'd like to think that like it'd be cool for it'd be sort it's a romanticized view that at two fifteen on May twenty second, twenty eighteen. I watched the clock turn and I was dumb, but no, I, even after that day, I still had to come in and take a test, so I wouldn't have to come in and take it tomorrow. It's like summer vacation. And then May 25th, I had to come into school and take a take an AP test. <laughs> Get fucked. And then, I, th- I think, I sort of count that as my last day of high school. And then, but I'm not going to lie, I, I kind of miss high school. I, I do too, actually. Why? Like, Why? Well, like, I miss everything about high school except the high school part. I miss all the people I knew in high school that I have had zero to no con- just no zero to no contact. That's wide range there. Yeah, just no contact with. Like they've gone all over the place. Now I, I have lost contact with many really good friends that I've known since almost like kindergarten, and um, it's just kind of like just sitting there and just like thinking about these people that you're probably never going to see for the rest of your life. And then it's just like that realization, you know, you have all these good memories with them and they're fucking gone once and for all. And you just kind of have to move on because you really can't do anything else about it. Exactly. Yeah. And then it's, it's like, I miss everything about high school except the high school part is essentially what I mean. Because academically, college is a lot better than, than high school I, in I terms of the actual workload. But 
I feel like with everything else about my life, I prefer high school to. Well, I don't understand. I'm I don't at. understand high school. It's kind of weird. Like high school tells you like they're trying to prepare you for college, and that college is just gonna be like uber hard. But it feels like high school, they just gave you so much more crap to do than in college. It's like, we actually had class at 7, we actually had to show up at like 7.30 a.m. I know. And we actually showed up. We had to wake up at like 5 o'clock in the fucking I'm, I'm, I'd be reluctant to show up to a class that was before 10 today. None of my classes start until at least 10. My like bastards, I still wake up at 5.30 in my, the morning. My earliest class is at noon. How long do you have to be there? <clears throat> like an hour. I, my last class ends at like five. Some of my class school for like seven hours every day. So well, I know I know how school works. Yeah. Believe me, I was in it for thirteen years, folks. Four, four years straight. You got held back. Seven what? classes. Did you get held back? Kindergarten. Hmm. I got expelled from my preschool. Oh yeah, did you get in a, you got in a fight with your sister? No, didn't you? no, that was first grade. I, the reason why I got expelled from um, my preschool was because the teacher. I don't, I, I, like, this is what my parents tell me. They basically told me the teachers were stupid and just let me do whatever I want. I was just destroying all sorts of shit. And I remember, I was thinking, I was like Godzilla, and I was <laughs> running around all these rooms just destroying all this. It was like some His art. email was Godzilla is awesome, and a bunch of numbers. I, that was like freshman year. I just, like, came up with Isn't it. that your Instagram handle? That's your, that's your I Snapchat changed, handle. I actually changed the Instagram handle. Yeah, it's a, it just says Dwight Phelps now, but you're, you're. Your Snapchat is that too. You can't really change that. He's yeah, you can't stuck change with that. that. Yeah, he created it his junior year though. Oof. I was fucking around with that one. But like, um, basically, I think I was pretending to be Godzilla. I remember like these little blue papers, like polar bears on them. It was like supposed to be artwork, and I think I destroyed all of them. <laughs> and then Dad came in, and um, Dad came in, and um. I got, to, he told me to go to the car, and we had a bron- Ford Bronco back then, and I thought I was getting out of school early, and I was really happy, and then he explained to me, essentially, I just got kicked out of my preschool, <laughs> and after that, we went to another preschool that was actually, like, just down the street from this one, and <laughs> there's that, and then I did get in a fight with my sister in first grade on the bus, because... Back then, there were two uh, bullies on the bus. Um, I'm not going to tell their names, but uh, they they used to pick on me a lot, and my sister would kind of gang up on a uh, gang up on me with them. And then one day, they basically pressured me to fight my sister, and I just did it because, truth be told, I think I was kind of upset with her that day to begin with, and I fucking fought her on the bus, and then. We both got dragged off the bus, and she was sitting there, like, crying and, like, begging not to get suspended. And I was just, like, sitting there laughing my ass off, like, trying to be as smug as heck. Okay, okay. Real talk, though. Real talk, though. Okay. Here, here's, here's what I was thinking. I remember it was uh, Thursday, August 23rd, 2018. Uh, the first day my dad first dropped me off to college. I remember when we first walked into the room, I got this strange feeling, you know? I felt like this... Was, was it, like, orientation? No, no, this was the first day of college. And then, like, it was opening weekend. And then I just got the strange feeling that it wasn't the present. That the present... <laughs> the, the, you got warped back in time. Essentially, what? yeah. That, that basically, like, the pre- that I'm not present me. The real me is seventh grade me. And everything since then has just been me watching. Has been the, my seventh grade self watching the rest of time go by. And, that, and watching my future unfold. And I'm still seventh grade me watching it. And, and the second... I walked into my college door- room for the first time was the second I went too far in watching the tape. The fuck? I went, I went too far in watching so my future just, unfold. that just like popped in your head. No, that, so were, that, you thinking, were you thinking something bad was going to happen? I just, I just felt like I had gone beyond what, where I morally should have. And so that, you think you morally you should have stopped at high school? Yeah. Honestly, it feels like, you know, it feels, it almost feels like I'm going through, like, a quarter-life crisis right now. That, that, like, that, like, you know, like, everything was the same. I lived in the same house for ten years. And now it's all... And now, now I live in, in Athens, Ohio, which, I mean, I'll be frank here, is a town I don't really like that much. You know, it's just, I'd be fine, you know, I have nothing personally against the town. I don't hate it, but it's not my home, and I feel like I'm spending too much time there. Not enough time where I belong. 
Oh, that's that's what you're really like. I mean, like I guess you are kind of unsatisfied with what happened in high school because no, I like what happened in high school. I liked high school. I miss it. Yeah. Girls liked me back then. <laughs> Back then, I was actually pretty popular. I was yeah, like a class. Yeah, but I was, I was Josiah like, could testament to how popular I was. Yeah, it was the same thing with me. I feel like I was a lot funnier in high school. Like, from, from seventh grade up through senior year, there'd always be at least one class where I was the class clown, and I could just, I could just say anything, and people would laugh. Actually, um, that happened to me last semester of college. <laughs> Fuck you! I got but that, but that, like, but that stopped in college. Now, now I'm not the funny guy anymore. And even when I do tell jokes, they just people don't laugh at them. Sometimes, so, it's, I, not always, sometimes it's not always good to be a funny guy, though, because when you're saying something serious, people won't take you seriously. I don't say serious stuff. I, like, unless, I don't unless it's with my very unless it's with my closest friends. I generally don't get too serious. People can tell when I'm joking and when I'm not. Okay. Or, like, they would take ideas that I, like, just toss out, and they would, I would let them just do whatever they want. You want to know how funny I was in high school? What? I remember my junior year, someone said a joke. No one laughed. Someone said, it'd be a lot funnier if Zach said it, and then I, I said it, and then everyone laughed. You know what? I got, I got, I got two positions when I came to senior awards. I got, I technically got class clown, but since I already got most likely the YouTuber, the class clown got handed to somebody else. Second position. So, that's that's my thing. See, Brent is Dwight is certified funny. Yeah, I some people, a lot of people said that they were going to vote for me for class clown, but I said, nah, nah, vote for me for best hair, because I thought I had a better chance of winning that. And then you got, and I got best hair. Yeah, but I think I could have, even if I didn't have hair, I feel like I could have won class clown. Zach taking on all the other class clowns for the top position of class clown and the class clown I mean, clown the person wars. who won class clown isn't even that funny. So I just think without me, there were no good candidates. Zach, so, you're not being funny. You, you want to know what represents my character arc from being my... Because, like, I remember in 7th and 8th grade, I was considered to be, like, the smartest person in school. Obviously not true. I'm just interested in certain topics and just bring up facts I know about it, and people get the impression that I'm smart. And so I did that a lot in 7th and 8th grade. People, people thought I was really smart back then. All right, we're back. Sorry, Dwight had to clean up cat shit. Yeah. Very, cats, very gross. Cats were being pretty, Very, very pretty, boring, very gross. Cats were being pretty bad. And uh, so, so now we're going to talk about uh, the general behavior of college versus high school. Um, yeah. I've seen some college kids that act like fuck boys in high school. Well, you know, like... Like, there is this one dude... Who I knew who was just completely acting like a fuckboy. <laughs> yeah, I'm, um, I am very skeptical of college drinking culture and party <laughs> culture. <laughs> you mean the seniorities and everything like that? Seniorities? Oh, whatever. Seniorities? Sororities and fraternities. Like, you know, I'm never, I'm not, I don't want to judge people who do join Greek life, but I would never, my dad was in Greek life. But I'm never going to join Greek life. If All I hear about Greek life is people just going out in the backs of some places and drinking underage. For me, it just seems like you're paying to have friends. Yeah. You know, they can be good <laughs> friends, but you're still, you're paying for them. And like, but that's, they, that's you're money. paying for a place to party every weekend. Yeah. And just, you know, I, I did go out and party for the first five or six weeks of college. But, you know, I just stopped after a while because it just, it just wasn't that fun. I mean, you don't you know? even, like, yeah. I had, I, I had fun. It was, it was, I, I don't regret doing it. But, you know, I never got wasted. I, I had some alcohol, but I never got wasted. Yeah, I've been to a few parties since, but they must have been host, hosted by my news, but the news organization I work for. And uh, it's, it's been, it's fun. You know, you get, you get to talk to some people. You get, you get to meet some people. But, you know, it's just like, you know what I don't understand is that, like, underage drinking is more acceptable when you do it in college, right? <laughs> Basically, yeah. Yeah, it's like, it's not, if you're just, if you're just doing it as a high school dropout, at 19, that's that's considered trashy. But but if you do it in college when you're 19, that's just part of college. It's just like so it's, it's like it's like almost like a class thing because it generally yeah, richer yeah, people go it, to college. It really is a class thing. It's like, like the just like if you're richer, it's more acceptable. It really is like that. You know, it, it's like there really isn't any defense of that. It's just it's just kind of like oh well, you're in the seniority, drink I, up. I feel like a lot of people a lot of people drink in college not because they. Want, I'm not calling out anyone a picture here, but like, just not because they want to, but because they feel like they should. 
They feel like the, they feel like they want they feel like it's a way for them to like get accepted. They 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 feel like they're in college and that's what they're supposed to do and it's and they're not they're not thinking about the future. Like like I'm just I'm just thinking like you they're could, all going to turn okay, into so alcohol. Not, they're not all going to turn into alcohol. My output on this is I think most people will drink anyways in a social aspect and I think college people go overboard with it because they're around most of their friends all the time. So yeah. adults that drink usually drink if they don't have problems, they'll usually drink for social reasons. So some people only drink when they have friends over, like adults. But during college life, you're always around those people. You're always around your friends. You're, you know, if you're in a frat especially. So going to a party and drinking is normal for frats and sororities. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, it, it is normal, but I'm, that doesn't, what I'm saying is that it is normal. And I get why people do it. But I just it, not my it's not for me and I had to, I do somewhat get in, I guess I guess it is just sort of it all it is almost hypocritical on my part because I have drank, I I've, I haven't gotten like super drunk but I have gotten tipsy, but uh, it is sort of hypocritical of me to say this but I just you know when people get drunk, and then <laughs> they they they're like <laughs> proud of it. Yo, I got trash. They, 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 they like, they, they like I'm so, I'm so, pr-. like, someone posed, I just got drunk for the first time. I'm like, I'm so proud of you. What are you proud? It's, not, it's, it's something you do. It's not something to be proud of. <laughs> like, I just like, so I do. Weird. I will dare ask judge why? you if you're proud of getting drunk. Like, if anyone can do it. What's the, like, is that just the point of drinking is to get drunk? Yes. No. So are sometimes. Drinking to get drunk is actually pretty unhealthy. Mentally. Yeah. But that that's that's what people do though. Yeah. No, you didn't. Well not not me, but that's what people in college do a lot. They just they drank to get drunk. And like that just seems like getting what? drunk is not a personality trait. Yeah. Getting drunk is just being stupid. Oh, well, I mean, if you do it occasionally, I'm fine with that. But like, some p- people go out and do it every every Friday. Yeah. Do it again on Saturday. Do it again on Thursday because some of the bars, if you pay five bucks, they won't ID you on Thursday. Oh my so fucking they, god! They do it. I remember <laughs> people in my learning community were complaining about this. They said they said like you know like they went out drinking and were complaining about their hangover the next day when they had eight a.m. classes. Like like if you have eight a.m. classes that you intend to go to. <laughs> Don't what? go out. I mean, if you if, if you do go out drinking the previous night, don't get wasted. Like, their livers are going to be hurting for a certain. Yeah, I just feel like they're not thinking of the consequences, and you know they might develop alcohol problems because they they did because they. I kind of want to see the statistics between like college students and alcohol versus non college students and like alcoholism. That would uh, that would be interesting. Yes, but I just think that like some of these people, like some people are just. Have personal have an addictive personality that will lead them to being an addict, probably no matter what. And then those kinds of people would reflect on people who don't have that personality, and the, but, but the, would but, force them and, you know, into that like, kind of and, you know, lifestyle. Like these people need to these people okay. need to be, be able to recognize that. Research, research shows that more than eighty percent of college students drink alcohol, and almost half report binge drinking in the past two weeks. Virtually all college students experience the effects of college drinking, whether they drink or not. Yeah. Yeah, well, that seems right, but uh, but basically, there's like you think that in these people with addictive personalities. I'm not saying they're like worse than us. I don't want to look down they're on them. Evil. I don't want I don't want to look down on them or anything. But you know, they need to recognize that and try to do try to do their best to to remediate on them. And you know, you do you do need to look look on that. But I think some of these people who don't even have addictive personalities. It's entirely preventable through there's a, they're just going out of their way to drink because they think that's what you're supposed to do, and then they're gonna be addicted. Yeah, like, later in life. That that's that's a stereotype of college. Like you look at most movies, that's kind of what we see at movies. We yeah. see these frat parties and like people getting shit faced and things like that. And I, I don't wanna I don't wanna look down on these people, you know, if you drank that's your decision, you know, but like but like even if if I can't help but like you know, sometimes if you if, if that's all you do in college, if that's if college is all about drinking for you <laughs> it's you all about yeah, it's all about like, partying. Like, you know, it's, it's not like, about you it's know, like you need to, education. Then it's like you need to re-examine your priorities. That's all. That's all I'm saying here. Like I don't. I don't want to condemn anyone who's ever gone partying. I've gone partying. I've done. It's. It's not too bad. You just got to be smart about it. It's kind of some just, of these people just aren't being smart about it. And then like I've heard people complain. They won't let me into the bar. That's the opposite of a problem. <laughs> like you know, like the, the bar is doing its. Fucking there's literally job. a place. Where you can buy beer and they won't ID you. Just like, go to there. 
You know, I think if you do it with your friends in your own in your own dorm, you're less likely to to go overboard than if you're at a bar. Where... You know, truth be told, I haven't gone to a college party yet, and that's kind of sad. I've, I there, maybe you should look into that. Maybe you should should try to go at some point, but like, but like you know, getting drunk occasionally, if you want to do that, even if you're underage, I don't look down that. But it's people do it every weekend. People yeah. do it on Thursday. People do it Saturday. You know, you got you got you know. Whenever they have two hours, they're just gonna fill them up. <laughs> yeah. In college, there's a lot more people that go on campus than actual than in, than a high school, and so with more people, there are more cars, and that could be more injuries. Yeah. Um, yeah. What's what he's saying here is that 696 thousand students between the ages of eighteen and twenty four are assaulted by another students who has been drinking. But but yeah, like I I've. I've drunk. I'm not. I'm not. I'm. I'm. I'm not innocent of this. But I mean, you know, just like I think, like a lot of people, a lot of people were drinking in high school, but they were real covert about it. <laughs> I was sitting at a but table, like, but like now like, these same people are drinking in high school, and they post about their Snapchat story. They have no shame. Yeah, it's like I, I was sitting at a table of people that would get drunk after every football game. So, like, I was sitting here because. I felt the only reason I was sitting at the table was because they were seniors and I was seniors, and I just <laughs> were they were they were they these e he he motherfuckers? Yep, yep, they were all <laughs> big time. Dude, are gonna get drunk after the after the game. I know. Is it, it was between them talking about that, talking about girls, and Fortnite. Well, I talk about girls too. Fortnite, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> You gotta get them V bucks, <laughs> fucking, fucking V bucks. Yeah, I took a second loan loan of my house for V bucks, <laughs> but uh, but but yeah, just that that that's that's one of my problems with uh, with uh, college parties. I felt like I had more fun at high school parties than college parties. If I'm, if there I'm was honest, this one like... high school party I had that I act- Zach actually had went to. Where I had a bunch of, like, friends of mine from, like, uh, high school come over to my place. And we all sat around me, had, like, a Nerf war. It was a water gun war, but yeah. Yeah, it was a water gun war, but it was, like, one of the best parties I ever had. And it was, like, one of the best parties I ever went to. I'm going to be honest, I didn't like those friends that much. Some of them were cool, but some of them I just (sighs) didn't. And then they didn't show up to your grad party, so. Yeah, and, like, one of them had even selected the date. So it wasn't even, like, I had selected the date. Like, one of them had selected the date, and then they weren't even able to show up. But I was able to bring Josiah along, and that's how Josiah met Zach. Mm -hmm. So it it worked out in the end. It wasn't that bad. Sort of of weird, though. I I almost consider Josiah to be a friend from high school just because you live around here. But, like, I didn't even know you until after graduation. Mm -hmm. So weird to think about. (laughs) You know, getting like, that meta. I know, like I, I keep a journal. Now I'm rereading my old entries. I read every day. I read the entry from a year, I typed a year ago. You know, I'm getting to some of the some of the memorable moments for second semester. You know, senior skip day, my last debate tournament. Uh, some I never some funny memories. Senior skip day, and uh, you know, it just you know I think that that stuff that stuff it's getting longer and longer ago, and you know it's ever gonna it's ever gonna come back. I'm never gonna be in high school again. <laughs> it's it's honestly kind of sad. You could so make a cartoon about the... how you're in high school. What? You could make a cartoon about how you're in high school. I don't know. Or make a school. video game about how you're in high okay, school. Okay, so this year, because the teachers predicted when the, the students were going to do senior skip day. <clears throat> oh, and, what the hell? And because it was it was obvious news, it was going around the school when all the kids were going to do You do it the Monday day. after the Super Bowl. And, uh,. Honestly, I was going to do Senior Skip Day, but I just forgot the day. Because it, like, it was like on a Monday to make it like a... Okay, so the way it was set up was we were off school on the weekend, and then Monday we had school, and then Tuesday we were off school because of a holiday. Oh, and so, so it was like election day. Yeah. And so we were going to skip that Monday, and I completely forgot. And so I went to school Monday, a few of my buddies went to school, and there were all kinds of seniors missing. And the teachers predicted it because it, it word of mouth had just got around. And all these different teachers did pop quizzes out of nowhere. And so we did all these quizzes in every class. And they were usually for like small points. For like 10 points, you know, 15 points, 5 points. And um, all the students that didn't go just got a zero. And so that's a 0% on their... On their 
oh, grades for that for that move. assignment, but I got it. I I and my friends got you know 100 percent for going. <laughs> Most of them were easy quizzes too. It was just like some What's teachers. The color some of teachers. The sky? Yeah, exactly. Some teachers would just bullshit around to get those in because they didn't actually prepare quizzes. They would just be like, "What's two plus two? And because we were there, we basically got those well, points. Well, they can't. They can't. Just because someone's absent, they can't mark them off for not taking a quiz. They did. It was a pop That's, quiz. That seems unfair. Like, you, they wouldn't do that if they actually were sick. Exactly. Like, okay, so like, well, they did something like that. they predicted it because all these kids were talking about doing it, okay, which so is why they made it a pop quiz. Curb, okay. Like, it was when, a pop, we, a pop group, quiz versus a regular quiz. A pop quiz just happens So it wasn't spot. worth that much. It was worth 100%. So it still counts as a hundred percent or a zero percent grade. Well, but like it's not, but it's not as far as the overall grade. Okay, so if you get two hundred percent, that means you have a hundred percent in that class. If you have a hundred percent, a hundred percent, and a zero percent, that brings your average way down. I, I, I know how math works, but like, were there, was there a bunch of other assignments in those classes? Uh, of course, but some classes, like electives, still gave pop quizzes, but not enough assignments to actually balance out the grade. Oh. So, like, music and society, how are we going to have, you know, all these assignments <laughs> if it's an easy class with a teacher oh that doesn't God. really give assignments? And I then always, on that day we have a pop quiz that's worth, you know. They did something like that at my school, except, you know, they just had a Valentine's match thing where you could fill out a, a test and they give you the results if you pay for it. They, did, they just didn't let you fill that out if you did Senior Skip Day. And only a fourth of the seniors in my school actually did Senior Skip Day. I mean, we did I like, it the day after the Super Bowl, I remember. I don't even think that many kids in my grade, which my grade is just literally like the grade above Josiah's, did Senior Skip Day. I don't think that many were really interested in that idea. And I'm just like listening to this. I'm just like, oh, wow, that, that's crazy. Did you do it? Me? No, Dwight. No, I never did a Senior Skip Day. Well, then you're not cool. We actually went to the Jungle Gyms near your house, me and a couple of friends during what Senior Skip Day. Yeah, we did, we did that. We went bowling, you know, just like, it was fun. It was fun. I'm a good kid. I have no life. So something I noticed with the uh, with Senior Skip Day, right, is the is the hood rats. They just, the, the school doesn't care if the hood rats skip school because they know they have no future. Well, that's the seniors, yes, yeah, so. No, that, that's all the hood rats. They, they know they have no future. When you go around with your pants sag, sagging and they're just like, and just like, oh man, I do, I do cocaine, man. And 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 you need and you and all your classes are freaking apex, and you uh, and you and you like deal heroin to twelve year olds, you know that's you, you you school doesn't care if you skip school, you know they, they just they have, still care. They would they until, would just, uh probably the beginning of junior year when they realize that you haven't changed, then they just kind of drop you. Between like sophomore and freshman year, they try to actually whip you in the shade. Now I don't. I didn't mean any of that. I didn't mean any of the hood rats stuff in a racist sort of way. Most of the hood rats in my school were white. Yeah. And they were just, they were just trying to act. Try they try, they thought they were cool when they when they did. I feel uh, like a more proper term would be trailer trash. Honestly, sort of, but but anyway, they would. Uh, but anyway, they didn't. Hood rats would just go and like, man, man, it's hood rats skip month, and the and the school would <laughs> school wouldn't give a shit. If they skip for a month, and you know the hood, the one day the hood rats actually would show up was senior skip day. <laughs> it's like, no, man, we're going, we're going to, we're going, we're going to learn today, man. <laughs> and, they're and too, so we, cool. They're so too like, cool for that skip day. Only about a fourth of my of the seniors in my class actually skipped for senior skip day, but this, the hood rats all fucking showed up. <laughs> they decided to show up that, every single one. Decided to show up that day. Did they even remember what classes they had? <laughs> I probably didn't remember what locker was theirs. They, I, you guys still use lockers at that point? Yeah. What the hell? Yeah, you don't. You didn't. No. All four years of my high school, I didn't use a locker. I just tried to use a book bag. Well, we weren't allowed to use book bags my freshman oh, that year. that sucks. But. Yeah, book bags are so much more helpful in high school. But yeah, but yeah, they uh, the hood they went the hood rats would skip, except on senior skip day. It was, was kind of funny because they just let them skip, but then they show up anyway. You know. All right. So final topic: graduation. I was surprised by how, how many hood rats graduated. I thought they dropped a lot. I saw a lot of them for the first time in 
since freshman year. Soon they dropped out, but no, they're right there. I accidentally dabbed on Brad Winstrup. Brad Winstrup has met the president of the United States. And he was the representative at my graduation. And I was thinking that once I got past the, the columns of high positioned individuals and got my scholarship, I would dab. Because I was kind of famous at my school for dabbing and stuff like that. So I did. And it looked like I just dabbed on Brad Winstrup. You did dab on Brad Winstrup. No, I didn't. Yes, he did. Uh, you you dabbed on him hard for uh, for um, whatever he did. I don't even know for for upsetting an establishment Democrat in the twenty thirteen primary. <laughs> okay, so, no, sorry, establishment Republican. Uh, I don't I don't even know who the hell that would be. I mean, it, it's it was some woman. I don't know, but uh, I, I, I exactly I don't even know. You don't even know. I don't even know. Yeah, that, that's how we got elected, but. Uh, I remember, remember, I show up and there's about fifty people at graduation. I didn't even know. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking, these people. For, I saw these people for the last time I saw them was seventh grade or some shit. I'll be like, I'll be like I, I'm, I'm, I moved from Fort Shawnee in second grade. I might as well show up to their graduation too. But what's up, guys? I'm back. The <laughs> <laughs> first time since 2008. I'm back. Yeah. He's back from his dad. Yeah, and so that that that's what graduation was for me. Graduation was the only major event that went exactly how I pictured it would, just because I I had been to a graduation before. So I thought that I thought that was kind of interesting. Honestly, my graduation wasn't a big deal. It, my my mine was a pretty big deal. That was the last time I've seen a majority of my school. My principal was upset because he had made a speech for it. But Brad Winstrup was showing up, so he wasn't going to be able to do his speech. <laughs> Brad Winstrup's like, hey, 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 I'll rank you. Hey. Yeah. And Have you so, looked at a picture so, of Brad Winstrup? You just know he was one of those e he he motherfuckers in high school. So uh, basically, in other words, on the practice, our principal gave us his final speech on his on the practice graduation before we actually did a actual graduation. So well, I met your superintendent. But he's a pretty cool guy, but yeah. The, the, the superintendent's the tall, skinny dude. The fr- principal's the, the fat, short dude. Yeah, I'm not the superintendent. Yeah. All right, so I that think, concludes... I think that's it. Uh, I'm not yeah. sure. Yeah, that concludes our first podcast. Uh, tune in next time for our next one whenever Dwight and I are together again because we went to different high schools. We now go to different colleges. We try to hang out when we can. Well, next time we hang out, we'll release another podcast just for you guys. Mm-hmm. Thank you. We could use House Party. <laughs>